सर्वप्रथम मी इत हार्दिक स्वागत करते पिंपरी चिंच साइंस पार्क के मुख्य कार्यकारी अधिकारी श्रीयुत सावले साहबान विनंती करते कि आज के अपले जे सन्म्नित व्याख्याता है डॉक्टर सुनील लोणकर पुष्प स्वागत कराव विज्ञान शिक्षण विस्तरण कार्यक्रम अंतर्गत आज हे जे व्याख्यान पुष्प है नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी या विषया त्या विषया उद्बोधन देने करता अपना सर्वानतर्फे डॉक्टर लोनकर मी विनंती कर आनंद होते कि साइंस पार्क मध्य इतने नक्की खूब प्रशंसनीय बाब है कारण आता मैं साइंस पार्क विजिट के खरोखरच एक वर्ल्ड क्लास साइंस पार्क इतने उभ के खूब वेगवेग् प्रकार से रेंजिंग फ्रॉम एटोमोबाइल्स सग इंग्लिश चले का मराठी हाँ दैट इज वेरी गुड सो इट्स इंडी द ग्रेट प्लेजर एंड प्रिविलेज टू बी हियर इन द साइंस पार्क and uh, i'm really fascinated with the facilities they have provided for the students and the fundings they have received from different automobile companies uh, in and around this industrial city of pcmc so uh, today i'm going to talk on nanotechnology and its applications so i hope many of you have heard this word before nano how many of you have heard this word before yeah yeah okay quite good number so before going ahead i would like to tell uh, my institution i am working at the petroleum institute in abu dhabi uae uh, it's not very far though it's a uh, three and a half hour journey from pune so petroleum institute is uh, it's uh, one of the premier engineering education institute in the middle east uh, it has been established in 2001 having 2000 uh, student in the capacity for different engineering branches and it is sponsored mainly by the abu dhabi national oil company which is the world's one of the biggest oil producer company even india we purchase oil from adnok which is 20% share the other sponsors are japan oil shell from netherlands and french company total and uh, this is what uh, where i work petroleum institute So today I am going to talk uh, uh, briefly about the nanotechnology because it's very broad subject. One cannot finish this in one lecture or so. So I will give the basic glimpse of this field and uh, I will discuss some applications about nanotechnology in different fields like energy, environment, medicine. Different materials has been used so far in the nanotech uh, different applications. Briefly, I will discuss the current development and future perspective of this uh, ever-growing uh, field. And finally, I will discuss some opportunities about nanotechnology. So, what is nano? As I said, uh, many of you are heard, but few still. I did not see many hands raised. Those who knows the nano, but definitely, we everybody know this nano because uh, this is the. car were designed and developed in this very own city of pimpri chinchwad and uh, one more thing we know that nano sim because this young generation now sim also changes to be some getting smaller so this gives the clear idea about nano is something small it isn't uh, the big thing but how small is the big question so it's very hard to imagine how small is the nano and how small this nano drives the technology which we call as nanotechnology how small so nano is 1 billionth of a meter 
is 10 to the minus 9 meter. We know meter. 1000 meter is 1 kilometer, we often see. But it's 1 billionth. You know 1 billionth? It's 100 crores. Because we rarely use this term here. 100 crores part of meter is 1 nanometer. So I will give you an example. If a normal man, normal man can walk 32 kilometers per day. If we shrink a man to a nanometer height, a man of 1 nanometer tall, if you ask him to walk across 500, new 500 rupees note, which is 150 millimeter in length, guess how long it will take to this nanometer tall man to walk across this 500 note bill? Any guess? It's no shorter than 23 years. When a man of 1 nanometer height, if you ask him to walk across 500 nan nanometer bill, it will take him 23 years, which is almost the half lifetime of human, those especially living in the cities in the polluted areas. So the nano, the basic term has been derived from the Greek word nanos. Now most of you guys in studying engineering and science, you know that most of this word, scientific word content uh, came from the Greek literature. So nanos, which means extremely small. So this nanos give the word nano that we are often using now. From another length perspective, if you see, uh, what is the nano again? You, most of us have studied atom. We know atom, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, so on. The diameter of the atom often is one angstrom, which is 0 0.1 nanometer. And if a that atom comes together, forms the bonding, we make molecule. And the molecule has average length or diameter, we, uh, we can say. It's a 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer. Virus. We often fall sick. We know what happened. Virus infection, doctor says. Sometimes it's a bacterial infection. So virus has the diameter in the range of 100 nanometer. So that big is the viruses are. Further, bacteria, it has length around 1000 nanometer. Later on, we have the cells. We know the red blood cell, white blood cells, and so on. So the diameter of the cells is 10,000 nanometer. So imagine how small nano is. Again, the point, if you put the point, uh, pen point on your notebook, the diameter of that small point is 1 million nanometer, which is 10 lakh nanometers. So just imagine how big, uh, how small is the nano and how big picture it derives. Again, the other examples are our DNA in the body, uh, bacterium length, uh, water drop. Another very interesting example is the carbon nanotube. These are the carbon tubes of discovered which has diameter of one nanometer. You know our hair? What's the diameter of the hair? Is 80,000 nanometer is the diameter of hair. So the smallest thing we say, oh, hair is the smallest in our human body. But this, the actual diameter of this hair is 80,000 to 100,000 uh, nanometer in the diameter. So what is the nanotechnology? It is the science of manipulating the atoms and molecules to make newer materials and devices because it's very interdisciplinary field. We can correlate the nanotechnology with your chemistry, biology, physics, material science, which interconnects with the engineering. What happened? And the field what generates, we call it nanotechnology. Because when chemistry correlates with the engineering, we can develop the nanotechnology, bio nanotechnology, and so on. So anything within the range of 1 to 100 nanometer is often termed as a nanotechnology or the nanometer. So uh, when you are reading this slide, will you imagine that your nail is growing 1 and half nanometer while reading this slide, even you don't realize that. Your nail is, re uh, is growing by 1 and half nanometer.
ಬರ್ತೇವೆ ರೀ ಬಾಗ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಯಸ್ ಟು ನೋ ದ ಹಿಸ್ತರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಕೆಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಹೂ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಜೀನಿಯಸ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಚರ್ಡ್ ಫೈನ್ಮೆನ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿರೈವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಒನ್ಸ್ ದ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಟೇಕ್ he 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 gave the lecture very uh, exciting lecture on there is a plenty of room at the bottom so he thought that we can make the machines at nano scale that can arrange the atoms the way we want and we can make different chemical synthesis and physical process to make uh, these different nano devices and this lecture was the ground breaking that time and this gave the birth for this exciting field of nanotechnology so imagine today almost 50 years back this genius guy thought nanotechnology we can make different different uh, objects and devices out of uh, arranging the atoms and molecules so now today we are experiencing this once he thought it's a reality today so same once you think differently now it will be a reality in your generations to come so just keep thinking so nanotechnology is a science it's 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 broadly divided into two fields one is the nano science and then nanotechnology at nano science researchers normally they think the different way to arrange the molecules and develop the nano structures it is like a, with a different chemical and physical properties and then technologist use this nano structures developed by the nano scientist to bring this nano structure into the real applications so here you can see the cellulose nano whisker cellulose we see plants wood often we have the cellulose the researcher in the laboratory develops some nano whiskers from those cellulose and those cellulose they woven into the fibers these are the wo- fibers then the role of technologist to use this nano structures of cellulose to make some products for example here this nano woven fiber has been converted into your trouser which has different properties than your ordinary cellulose uh, woven uh, trousers so these are the broad two uh, fields from the nano technology which is the nano science and technology then why nano technology why do we need it nano technology we are happy with what is going on as what the knowledge you have obtained from our pre- previous generations why do we need to adopt this technology because the properties of this mate- uh, properties significantly change when the size has been reduced uh, you can see the slide uh, though it's not very clear but very important slide you see the block this uniform block if we chop the small piece out of that block we can see the surface area here is slightly increased it's not the uniform block we see this chopped part the surface area here is increased but if you go more finer you can see the same amount of piece of block the surface area has been significantly increased this is the simplest example of how property can change if you go from bigger scales to the lower scales because at nano scale more atoms why they are reactive the nano materials because at nano scale we have more atoms available for reactions they are highly reactive because here you see more atoms just consider these are the molecule and chopped into the atoms more atoms are available for different reactions so this gives the fascinating property for the nano material for example a graphene is a carbon nano material if it's a surface to volume ratio can you imagine 1 gram of graphene can cover entire football field when tiny 1 gram of this material if you spread it can cover entire football field this is the power of nano so how do how we can f- f- fabricate from where this nanometer how we can synthesize this materials 
So there are two broad uh, methods has been uh, developed to uh, synthesize or produce these nanomaterials. First is a top-down nanofabrication, where we will bring the, 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 it start with the large object. Then we'll chop, 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 bring it down to the nanoscale. So this is a very good example, graphite. It's very bulk abundant available in the nature. If you do some processing or physical mechanical processing, we can convert this graphite into nano diamonds, which has again very unique and uh, uh, exciting properties. And bottom up approach, again this is also an exciting uh, approach for nano fabrication. We have seen the kids playing the building blocks. They are making different, different uh, uh, structures. So similarly, if you bring different atoms together, we can construct the nanomaterial. So here is the silver nanoparticles, silver nitrate. The silver ions comes together under certain chemical conditions. We can produce silver nanoparticles. So, th so these are the two ways to fabricate the nanomaterials. First is the top down. One is a bottom up. Okay, but is nanoscience is new for us, but it's in nature since long. You often see the lizard. Pali bagitle da pan garat pali. Kutei kashai binti varti. They are just uh, you know. Uh, this this is a gecko, in fact, kind of the same fa family of lizards. Uh, even we have seen the Spider-Man cling on the roof like that, and just uh, uh, spreading the silk. And uh. so, what happens here? These geckos, how, what's the power they have? They can cling without any support. They don't have magnet on their paws. Just 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 how they, but how it sticks to the surface. Because this creature has billions of nano hairs on their paws. So these billions of nano hairs produce a certain kind of forces. We have heard the Wonder Wolf's force of attraction? Yes, I guess. So these billions of nano hairs form some interactions with the surface that allows them to cling or to hang without any support. So these are the exciting uh, mimic, biomimic uh, creatures we can find in the nature. Even the many laboratories in Europe and US, they are mimicking. They are making the artificial lizards. Those can really behave like the natural ones. Even spider silks we have seen. When you go out uh, in the maybe winter or sometime, the spider, the kosh, I, Marathi word, I don't know for that. Koi, I guess. So he builds, it's a trap for him, for his food, he built this trap to uh, catch some flies and so on as a food. But you know this spider silk contains a nano threads. This nano thread, if you count by its weight, they are 10 times stronger than your uh, steel, stainless steel. So such a powerful these threads are. Even you can elongate of its 10 times the spider silk. Again, we see the butterflies are beautiful colored uh, flies in the nature. But from where this color comes? Have you ever wondered? No. Because these colors comes, they have some nanostructure in their body, develop some nanostructure in their wings. When the sunlight strikes on those nanostructure, this nanomaterial absorbs the light and emit with a different wavelength. And that's why we see this fascinating color for the butterflies and the flies, which is very uh, shining one. This uh, uh, beetle, it's formed in Namibian desert, where the water is very scarce. We cannot find water easily. But this smart beetle collect the water through these bumps. You are seeing the bumps on his body. So the specially designed bumps secret some nanomaterial which attracts the moisture, water from the moisture. And their wings is highly hydrophobic, which don't allow water to go. So once this bum collect the water, the, he put the wings on and collect the water for his daily living. Another bird you might have seen in the picture because we don't find this in India. 
But you see this bird, half of its body is its beak. So it's so it's 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 question that how he's managing such a huge beak. He can strike anywhere and hurt or broken, but no. This colorful beak has a keratin nanoplates. Keratin we know, I guess. The protein that we grow the nails and hairs. The same keratin is in the nano form, it's he, they are building their beaks, even the inside they have nano bone fibers, so which give the toughness to their beak. So even if they, they cannot damage uh, uh, their beaks. So this, the previous slide was the nature, nanotechnology in nature. But for us as well, nanotechnology is not new. The ancient people, the Greek people, already were using nanotechnology. But they are not aware of this nanotechnology. They are only aware that they are making something fascinating. If they are using the gold, if, if gold and silver glass, if they, they get beautiful colors. They use nano-sized gold and silver particles because it changes its optical properties. You know the gold? It's yellow, sh glittery, shining metal, which is very dear to we all Indians. But this gold, which looks yellow, in fact, if you bring down to the nano level, it's red in color. Even its color can be changed by tuning its the nanoparticle size because its optical properties is directly related to its the size. You can see the different spectrum of color can be obtained from this gold. So this Greek artist, they were using this, you know, centuries back. These colors to make the red, blue, green from these uh, noble metals. So as I said, strange things can happen at small scale. So if you keep cutting down the gold pieces at the nano scale, they don't, they don't look gold anymore. They look red. Moreover, the properties, if you see the bulk gold, if your gold ring, if you melt, it will melt around about 1000 degrees Celsius, which is very huge temperature. But at nano scale, gold can melt at 300. So you see the difference between bulk and nano. So this property change, significant property change can happen if you come from bulk to the nano level. So I will classify this. Now the fields is I'm going more deeper, so we'll have the ideas of how what happens in the details of this uh, different nano uh, nanomaterials. So there are different classes of these nanomaterials. Dimen you, you must have known the dimensionality. So zero dimensional, which is sphere. There is no dimension for that object. So, so we can prepare the different type of nanoparticles of different dimensionalities. For example, zero dimensional. These are the sphere like gold nanoparticles, silver nanoparticles, or different spherical nanoparticles we call as a zero dimensional. When it's one dimensional, these specially these are the nano rods or nano fibers like cellulose nanofibers. Two dimensional, these are the films. Film like layered like layered like uh, material or the substrate we call as two dimensional nanometer. And three dimensional, which we can see all the three sides at a time, it's called three dimensional nanometer. This is the graphene foam which I have prepared in my laboratory back in Abu Dhabi. So one example, I will go into the detail. There are hundreds, thousands of nanometers available. But I would like to show this exciting nanomaterial is a graphene. Even if you go back home, if you have access to internet, just check it out. What is the graphene? So graphene is a carbon allotrope. Carbon, we know that. It's abandoned in nature. So the graphene is a two-dimensional crystal carbon structure arranged in honeycomb. It's a structure of graphene, it looks like. Why I'm showing this slide? Because these are properties. The properties of this material is superbly fa fascinating. There is no material exists still now which can match the properties of graphene, which has surface area, as I said, one gram of graphene can cover entire football field. Its mechanical properties as well, 
its uh, tensile strength is 1200 gigapascal which is way above the steel electrical conductivity as well as superconductor you can say is, con is it has conductivity again many times better than your silver copper or any conventional electric conductors even the thermal conductivity of this material is uh, very high and this you see the weight you often see in the nature around here in the summers that uh, I don't know what they call this very light hairs on that uh, plant it comes so this the graphene foam easily can stand on that very delicate uh, fibers of uh, that uh, what I say plant and the microscope graphene look like this this is a two nanometer scale you just imagine how the graphene looks in the mi under microscope so how th this graphene get discovered it's very very exciting to know this it's very simple scotch tape we use ev every day you know the graphite crystal or the pencil we write which is made up of graphite so just a scotch tape you put on the tip of your pencil and just pull it off and when the scientists who discover graphene see under the microscope they see this layer of carbon and they later term as a graphene and you will not believe it has been rewarded with the Nobel Prize in 2010 so very simple idea but he think differently so it's very important to you young students think and try to execute what happens discuss with your teacher yeah, I have this idea how I, I think it's different so every simple idea has significant science behind it I, I, I have a small video I will play for you for half a minute okay it's not working here okay I will explain you how this has been discovered so this graphene has been discovered in UK University of Manchester it was very Friday rainy evening in the Manchester two scientists a weekend on the Friday but still they were working late night because they are cleaning some graphite crystal for their experiment even they are never thought that they are going to produce such a fascinating material so while cleaning that dust from the graphite crystal they use a scotch tape easiest method and to curiosity to see this dust under microscope luckily they found these layers of carbon under the microscopes so they were very curious what is these layers so they kept away their experiment what they are doing and just their curiosity drives them to see what is it actually and eventually they end up with seeing these graphene layers so this 2004 experiment then they stopped all their ongoing research and they're fully focused on this unknown material what is it but they wanted to know the properties if uh, one of um, amongst us is there we say oh it's none of my business we'll keep continue what has been given to you to carry on with your research but these two genius Andre Geim and Contatius Noosolau these two pair continued their research in this field and finally in 2010 they proved is the material is a carbon allotrope and it's a graphene and then Nobel has been awarded to them which is a huge success and today in any research laboratory in the world you will see most of the labs is working on the graphene there is a no field where graphene is not touched though it may be medical science mechanical automobile material or anything water technology everywhere if you type in Google your area of interest and graphene you'll see extensive research is being happening in this uh, field so this is the different type of applications synthesis procedures for graphene and fortunately small piece I also have contributed to this field this is my review has been published in nano research which is giving the chemical modifications of graphenes so different technique for graphene modification has been authored by me and my colleagues which is published in the nano research is one of the prestigious journal in the nanoscience okay so what are the applications so far I hope you know got the idea what is nano and nanotechnology so now we briefly discuss what are the applications okay we make the material that's fine but where do I use that what are the ways how do I benefit from this material so I will explain briefly the, what are the applications and future for the nanotechnology 
there are tremendous application possibility for the nanotechnology from energy, drugs and medicine, nano devices, uh, different optical engineering, defense and security, cosmetics, even nano nanofabrics. Statistically, as I said, nanotechnology was growing, growing, growing. The research till 2010, we can say. But now from that 2010, it's speeding up towards making the devices and real-time products. The research was still 2010. Huge amount of uh, efforts has been made to improve this nanotechnology research. Bow, but scientists now at the age to really deliver the product based on the nanotechnology. So you can see the industry of nanotechnology is divided into almost all the fields like hybrid materials, information technology, semiconductor industry, medical, electrochemical sensors and so on. So each and every field has been touched today with the nanotechnology and the advancement is I think it will be continue in the generations to come. So mostly used field of the nanotechnology has been mostly used in the field is nanoelectronics. We are seeing most extensive change today is happening in the electronics. You see the television in our childhood or the or your, your last generation now you see the television very thin flat screen even though your mobiles size of the mo mobiles is changing significantly that is due to the nanotechnology. Because scientists can able to make the nanotransistors, nanodiodes, the organic light emitting diodes as well. But what are the advantages of using this? Because it increases the density of your memory chips in these electronic devices. Decreasing the weight, thickness of the screen. Because all your uh, major electronic component is at the nanoscale or built from the nanomaterials. It can reduce your, the size of transistor in the integrated circuit boards, reducing the power consumption. You can see here, 2 GB per, uh, USB, the memory stick in 1980, see the size of it. And it's the whooping price of 80,000 US dollar. The same after one decade in 1990, the size has been significantly reduced with its price. It's 200, merely 200 US dollars. And after one more decade, you see the how research can change our lives and how science can change our lives. 2 GB in 2010, the size, almost we carry this, but not in the Western country though, they are smallest than this. 2 GB in 2010, merely 5 US dollars. But the day is not far that we will witness 1000 GB memory stored in the head of your pin. The research significantly going on. Very soon, maybe couple of, uh, let's say, in end of this decade, we can witness this change, which is, we should say, thanks to this nanotechnology. And the future, the days again, not far, where we'll have flexible electronics, wristband, which can provide you all the movements of your body, as well as timings, and so on. But the one important thing is, again, the day is not very far when we are printing the electronic circuit board on your skin. Younger generation is very fond of these days to having tattoos on your skin. So soon you will we'll have this type of tattoos which will give entirely body information on this uh, electronic circuit board. For example, your heart beats, so on the body temperatures and different informations. So this is a molecular device again. So nanomolecules when come together they can show the very fascinating properties and we, this nano, nano devices is very important area again. Have you heard of the robots these days? So they are using this nano, nano devices to control the robotic movements. So another fascinating area of this nanotechnology in the applications is nanomedicine. Nanomedicine is the nanotechnology used for the treatment, diagnosis, monitoring and control of the biological system. B drug delivery. So when you take the drug, which is a conventional way, but if, if drug can be controlled using this nanotechnology, if you use the targeted drug delivery, with the liposomes, which can be loaded with different type of drugs, and we can externally control when to deliver this drug on site. 
and which amount we wanted to deliver this drug. Biosensors can be implanted in the body, which can give us the alert before heart attack and so on. Even the nano robots is being developed for the brain surgery because the brain is the most complex organ human is having. And it's not very e easy to deal with the brain surgery and so on. So the scientists in Western countries are de developing the nano robots which can facilitate this nano surgery, uh, the surgery in the brain. And another, uh, another approach is cancer therapy. You know, the, uh, I, I guess one million people are suffering in the cancer in the world today and half of them, even if having such a significant advancement in the medical field, they die. There is no 100% cure for the cancer today. So nanotechnology is showing some ways to cure the cancer using different nanoparticles. I will give a small example of this. The research is almost to the end now. They have successfully tested on the rats. Now this, this medicine will come into the market very soon. So cancer, when it diagnosed in your body, it, it consider the one part of the body is the cancer cells. Then in the body, we have to inject gold nanoparticles, which modified with some uh, biological agent, which has affinity for cancer cells. So once injected into the body, these particles will get attracted to our cancer cells. And this is how they will be in the cancer cells. These are the yellow gold nanoparticles and these triangles are the some biomolecules. Once this is surrounded by the ca nanoparticles in this cancer cell, the l certain frequency laser has been irradiated on that target. So what happens as I showed before, gold nanoparticles as per their size absorb the light and emit a different wavelength. So here what happens when the en certain energy, I think it's a near infrared light is irradiated on the gold nanoparticles, nanoparticle excite because it's the ability to absorb the uh, light. When it excites, when it's come to the ground state, it emits the heat. That significant heat cancer cell cannot tolerate. And due to that, that heat shock they cannot tolerate. So cancer cell get burst or they get killed away. So this is very simple technique for cancer treatment. Maybe in year or four or five years we will see in the, the hospitals people, doctors are treating patients with this uh, nanotechnology or nano-based cancer treatment. Now nano in energy. As yeah, we know the India is very developing with very fast rate. Energy is the major uh, thrust that we need for our development. So in the nano, nano the, the importance of nano in energy, let's say conventional energy, which is coal-based uh, power plants or the gas-based power plants. Here we can use nano in different uh, aspects, like light-weighted material we can use for turbine, which can reduce the energy consumption and so on. The biggest challenge, we know that electricity we produce, that's fine. But the biggest challenge is its distribution. Almost 30 to 40 percent electricity is being lost due to the distribution. Okay, we prepare something, but we cannot even able to distribute effectively. Because in the power grids, 34 simple electricity is getting lost. To minimize that or to avoid that, scientists have developed some isolation systems, which are nanomaterial reinforced material. Furthermore, the soft magnetic nanomaterials that can be used for efficient current transport all these technique is being used in Western countries now. Of course, some time it will take to reach our country or our scientists will develop sooner or later this type of technology in the energy sector. So alternative energy, these days we are saving in, in, in the cities here in India as well. Our Sandru, uh, the roofs is covered with the solar panels. Even the mountains, especially the Sayadri range is having these windmills. So this is the alternative energy sources. Although its contribution is uh, not that significant uh, uh, as per our consumption, but this also can significantly change by nanotechnology. Especially, like, for example, these windmill blades are very huge and long. If you use the nano reinforced composite to make these windmill blades, we can make very lightweight because I as I told you before, nano is very light. 
if you add 1 gram you can make very huge blade which has very strength uh, capacity and so on then the lighter the blade more it will rotate more it will rotate more energy you can get out of it so this is different again hydrogen generation this is also the one area where i am working in abu dhabi hydrogen generation from water water is abundant everywhere we have water so we are developing some catalyst to split this water into hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen also we know that now we can run the vehicles the europe they already have the cars bmw i guess developed the car which can run on hydrogen again the fuel cell storage batteries which is fully loaded with different nanotechnology or nano materials these days again oil and gas uh, this is our thirst area in abu dhabi we mostly works nanotechnology in oil and gas so here we are not that aware because we don't have oil wells and so on in india but uh, this has very important role uh, to play in the oil and gas so in oil exploration its purification and so on a very small slide i will show what I, we are doing in the abu dhabi natural gas that we use for our cooking but it doesn't come as pure as what we use because when they take natural gas from the earth crust it's highly impure special impurity is hydrogen sulfide in the lab we often smell that rotten egg kind of smell it's a hydrogen sulfide which is very poisonous so very strict limitation has been given by the governments to cut down this h2s so our research is to remove this impurity from natural gas so what we are using some metallic nanoparticles like zinc oxide copper oxide and so on so this metal nanoparticles have special interaction with hydrogen sulfide through hydrogen bonding so when you make this sorbents we just keep into the column past the hydro the natural gas which is impure to the column and from the top we can get the pure gas you can see this the nano this is a 20 nanometer scale and this is almost 5 to 10 nanometer zinc oxide nanoparticles that has been prepared in our laboratory and this research has been published in one of the prestigious journal again what is the application of nano in transport because as the days are years are progressing we are becoming more travel savvy these days we often travel here and there with different advanced modes of transport so nano technology will significantly make changes in this transportation to make your transport safer faster and cheaper because again nano composites the materials already is in use especially in toyota they are using their cars the nano composite for different uh, body parts even the airbus the biggest aeroplane manufacturing company also using some nano composite in their interior body parts of the aeroplane to make the aeroplane lighter lighter the aeroplane fuel consumption is less pollution is less so this is the implications of nano technology in this transport industry even uh, scientists are developing the eco friendly fuels some additives to minimize the frictions in the engines of the automobiles is being built and another carbon black nanoparticles we see the tire is black actually it's not black the rubber what we derive from the plant is white but how it become black there is the carbon powder into that but if you add nano carbon black particles the strength of the tire has been significantly been increased when you are replacing tire in 10 years if you use nano reinforced you will replace in 20 years construction industry is also not uh, behind using this especially they are developed anti graffiti paints you often see in the walls people are writing any rubbish on the walls same means in europe also people likes the graffiti they make some uh, different cartoons on the walls so their municipality also paid up of this and every day they cannot change the paint so they develop the paint that no one can draw the graffiti or no one can write anything on the wall the paint which has some special nanoparticles which don't have affinity for the paint molecules we cannot write anything on that wall so cement we can reinforce the cement using some nano materials for special application to make the concrete more stronger and tougher waterproof paint self cleaning buildings these are the applications uh, nano technology is providing for the construction industry again in the glass industry 
even we'll uh, we'll witness in a year or so because the, the huge company is called Saint Gobain from France. Already is in India. They are producing the glass materials. So the glass, if you as TiO2 is used to coat the glazing, sterilizing, and anti-fouling. So sterilized glass is also very important because we see the most of the glasses will uh, the bacterium will uh, at, uh, live on the glass. So we need to sterilize the glass. So if you add this TiO2, it will self-sterilize because sunlight is highly absorbed by these TiO2 nanoparticles. And sunlight is absorbed, it kills the bacteria on the glass. Similarly, we can have the fire protective glass, anti-scratch glass using this nanotechnology. Here you can see, you can make the uh, glass opaque any when uh, when you want because you, uh, if you, if you if you tungsten oxide in the glass if you put the light on it will be opaque if you turn off it will be transparent so as and when you wish when you to see from other people outside you can tune that even the, the thermochromic this also very fascinating application in the glass uh, in the sunlight if you add some UV uh, absorbing agent you can change the color of the glass as well with the voltage in the textile also there is a nano already in the place you often see the lotus leaf I guess the water droplets is easily roll over it's not like other leaf that it gets wet because it has special kind of biopolymer which is highly hydrophobic which don't like water, no attraction at all. That's why the water droplet easily rolls over this uh, lotus leaf. So similar strategy using nanotechnology is being used in textile. For the stains, but same technique they are using, that this dirt should roll over in the, on the, your textile shirt or the pant using uh, these uh, nanoparticles see see same same fashion but zhatakladari it should go off no need to wash even and there are techniques they are developing for anti wrinkles some polymers nano biopolymers uh, they cannot put the impression when folded so the same technology they are using in the textile to make this uh, wrinkle free uh, textiles this is again very important slide agriculture because as we know we are agriculture driven economy India so nanotechnology has huge potential to be used in agriculture and food security and safety we can make different genetically modified seeds to uh, have more produce in our farms even the diseases we see most of our crops are often infected with the number of diseases there is no count so different type of nano molecules at very small amount we can get rid of this uh, different diseases on our crops and even we can dete detect this uh, attack on their crops easily using the nanotechnology uh, of course this mostly used in the uh, western countries the ketchup is integral part of their <laughs> you know meals and they are very get uh, fed up with when it's not coming so smoothly so they are using some nano silica particles in their ketchup to come the ketchup very smoothly out of the bottle and uh, again very important application of nanotechnology the similar lines I worked in the Belgium to prepare smart packaging for food so smart packaging is what if just imagine if you have a strawberry in one plastic container and we don't know how old it is is it safe for eating or no we just got in the uh, supermarket a packet of strawberry so the smart packaging will change its color to indicate you that no it's not safe refrain from eating this so this is smart packaging because we have certain nanoparticles that interact because the fruit when it's ripe over ripe releases some molecules or chemicals which interact with the certain nanoparticle in your packaging which packaging changes its color or uh, especially color from that color we notice that the food is not good for eating so no need to read the expiry date and so on package itself will tell you oh just go off 
is a nano capsule for astronaut as well. Nano in sport, yes, we are far behind of this because our major concerns are different. So they are developed some, as I just told you, the uh, graphene and carbon nanotube re reinforced uh, this tennis racket, uh, which has more durability and flexibility and impact resistance. Even these uh, hockey sticks, they have developed using different nanoparticle reinforced composites. Cosmetic. This is also nanotechnology driven. Most of our sunscreen, what we employ, has this titanium oxide or zinc sulfide, cadmium sulfide nanoparticles, which absorbs the UV light and uh, without any color. That's why most any sunscreen bottle you see in the market, what you use. You just see the ingredients. Definitely, we'll see either TiO2 or zinc sulfide or cadmium sulfide. And uh, I'm sure that in future cosmetics will be full of nanomaterials, which are safe for the body. Even the silver, even these days we see the advertisement in the refrigerator that nano silver technology. This is because it's antimicrobial. Nano silver is highly antimicrobial. And defense is also very uh, the growing area for nanotechnology various n number of patents being filed on the different defense because you know it's a big huge market for the western countries they are developing diff different sensor uh, bulletproof jackets military vehicles some um, strong and light wave anti missiles and so on i will not go into much details so what is the future where you see the nanotechnology in our life it's okay, oh, they have developed the product, that's fine, but how we will see ourselves in this nanotechnology framework? So you can see here we'll have intelligent clothing that will measure your pulse rate right away. You will have your desktop nanotubes uh, notebook display and so on. Here you can see the organic light emitting diodes will be for different displays. Very thin, like paper, your display will be like papers fabrics coated with the, uh, as I explained, the stain-free fabrics. And this all together, market of this is huge. You can see by 2018, this some private companies predicted that almost three and a half or four trillion dollars is the market. It's huge uh, potential. The revenues, in fact, it's not the potential. They are predicting the revenue of nanotechnology industry will be in such a high uh, figures. Okay, so it's very important slides for all uh, my young friends here. <laughs> Where I can pursue the career in this nano. That's that's very important. Because uh, I know that uh, we, we, we study different. I studied BSc chemistry. And I was very average student. So, but nanotechnology can offer you careers in different Although if you are an engineer, a pharmacist, a medical doctor, a BSc chemistry, physics, biology, if you are in science, nano is there for you. You can choose any, any field, you can correlate that with nanotechnology. So you have career in design, development, technical support, research, sales, teaching, because the coming years will be nanotechnology, be assured. So right from the now, in fact, I request all of this, my college young friends, that you must be having some research project at the end of your curriculum, isn't it? Three months, four months. So choose any area of interest and try to search, correlate that with nanotechnology. If you are studying pharmacy, if you are studying engineering, an area of inter uh, your interest and check whether what is happening in that area in the nano. And I want your report should be on the nanotechnology because future is nano. If you want to study, go further or go in Western countries, this is, I would say, it's mandatory. So your weightage of your research thesis with nanotechnology, I am pretty sure that significantly very high. Or it looks attractive. If you have nano in bio, nano in pharma, they will right away say, oh, excellent, good job. So I would like to thank I'm uh, at the end of the presentation. And indeed, it's a uh, nano world. And our next time, or the future, certainly will be nano. The next big thing will be small, no doubt. <laughs>